on channel 79. I think everybody knows that, but just to let everybody know. So, um, all right, it's 701. People are coming on. Um, just want to let you all know, we've got Tim McDermott with us, um, who's with the part of the Live New Canaan campaign, part of the Noble House um, effort that you all heard about back, oh God, I don't even know when that was, um, a while back. And then we also have um, Beth Sanford and Nancy Bemis with us on the Sculpture Trail um, from the Land Trust to talk about the Sculpture Trail and what's updating, what's happening there. So let's just quickly start with, um, as we always have to do, uh, first of all, we have Bob Doran with us, but Bob Doran is now officially not a member of TDAC. Um, maybe people should mute themselves. Someone's got some TV on or something in the background. Um, Bob has, um, is in, well, Bob, do you want to explain wh why you're no longer a TDAC member? Um, yeah, sure. Okay, go for it. <laughs> hey, Tucker. Um, Hi. Yeah. Um, with, uh, with the town and with uh, NCTV79, which is a nonprofit organization, I am working at the moment to look at, uh, to work with Paul Sedlak, who is the executive director of 79, as to what Channel 79 can do going forward. It has been a great asset to the town. It's primarily, uh, it's, its primary focus has been over the last few years, government covering meetings like this. And for years before it had a lot of coverage of community events, uh, which have kind of subsided over the last couple of years. So bottom line is I'm working with Paul and uh, NCTV 79 to see how we can uh, rebrand and revitalize uh, that town asset. And in doing that, because it's a nonprofit, I thought it was best that I resign from this town commission so that there's no, no conf certainly no conflict of interest and no perception of a conflict of interest. So that's why, and as I told Tucker and, uh, and Kevin, it is my plan to continue to, to, to be here and to help and to uh, advise where I, where I can, but my official duties as a committee member mean I, I sit in the, uh, in the seats and just speak up when, when asked to, or when offered the option to. So thank you all. I think uh, TDAC has been doing amazing work with a whole lot of opportunity ahead of us. So thank you. All right, thank you. And glad you're sticking around with us. Um, all right, so Greg, you wanna quickly, um, we just need, um, I sent you all the link to the minutes of the May 28th meeting. So uh, we just need to see if anybody has any edits, changes, or if not, can we get a motion to approve? I move to approve. All right, a second. I second it. All right, uh, that's Jack Trefero. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We are joined tonight with Tim McDermott, who is part of, as I told you, part of the team, the Live New Canaan campaign that has been going gangbusters. And I invited him to join us tonight to give us a little bit of a presentation on exactly what they've been doing. Hopefully you all have been seeing their work and, and helping actually with a lot of content for the program. So um, Tim, I think I'm gonna let you take it from here and tell us a little bit about what's going on and what your guys' plans are for the future. You're muted. Just unmute yourself. <laughs> ah, there you go. There we are. Let's also make sure that I can share my screen. Um, all right. Are we all able to see my full screen? Yes. Excellent. Well, everyone, thank you for having me here tonight. Very pleased to, to be able to showcase all that we've been up to these past few months, <laughs> battling COVID and getting everything on track, very pleased and delighted to showcase what we have for you. Uh, in terms of an overview, I would like to go over the various services that we have been supplying to uh, the Live New Canaan campaign, the various marketing channels, which you could see here on your right. If there are any difficulties hearing me, please uh, don't hesitate to interrupt. Likewise, if you should have any questions as I move through each of these sub-services, uh, please don't hesitate to let me know. And there, there we go. In terms of the first service will be social media or organic. So at the beginning of the campaign, we said 
we needed to launch a comprehensive audit across all the social media platforms, streamline the branding. New accounts were created for LinkedIn and Twitter in order to expand our reach. And since then, we have experienced tremendous growth across all platforms. Facebook and these percentages get a bit ridiculous in the thousands. Uh, but essentially what you're seeing here is we've been able to organically increase the number of dedicated followers on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, quite substantially since we first launched and first started posting February 16. And so in this manner, we are able to attract pertinent audiences and have them support the Live New Cat Canaan campaign. And I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, remind everyone that is listening or, or watching that this is the result of a two year cumul accumulation of efforts that have been conducted by TDAC, Chamber of Commerce, New Canaan Board of Realtors to promote all aspects of New Canaan and highlight its six pillars, showcasing why it is such an incredible location to, to live, to work, to school, etc. And uh, am I going too fast? Is everyone able to see, hear, understand? Perfect. Go for it. Perfect. Marvelous. Next, we go over to social ads. So part of the social media management is we have the organic side of things with all of the custom content, and then we have the advertising. So using budgets allocated to Facebook and Instagram to position ourselves and place ourselves in front of key audiences that would be that we're hoping to attract to move or learn more about New Canaan. And since the campaign began, even since the previous campaign, and it's highlighted here, we've been bringing down the cost per click substantially. What this illustrates to us is not only are we targeting the correct individuals, having a really highly curated audience, but it is costing us less and less with every campaign to get the Live New Canaan campaign in front of their in front of their eyes and then this is this is a more detailed overview of the previous june campaign showing just how many individuals we are able to bring directly to our livenewcanon.org website which i'll be getting to later as well as the average cost per result how much it is costing to bring all of these individuals in front of us to provide a more a greater insight, reach is the number of unique individuals whom we are getting our messaging in front of and impressions. This is the number of times they would have received that message. So 8,750 people yielding 16,878 uh, impressions just from the June campaign alone, which was highlighting the more generic messaging. We are also able to A, B, C test our ads and automatically allocate budget according to which advertisements will be yielding the greatest result. Email marketing is another fun uh, channel we are employing to spread our messaging. We've been increasing the number of recipients per email by anywhere from 5,000 to 10,000, employing our, our curated lists, employing the local lists from New Canaan, Darien, Greenwich, Old Greenwich, Westport, Westchester, Brooklyn, Manhattan, ever expanding that list. And in terms of the open rates and the click-through rates, they have been absolutely phenomenal. With each one of these campaigns, we are able to highlight and showcase a unique aspect of New Canaan um, with all of the custom coding, design, animations. So if any of you may have received one of these emails, uh, I'm hoping that you have been enjoying uh, what you have in front of you. Oh, and let's not scroll all the way there. Digital placement. This is part of the Google search ads. So. Uh, we are a Google partner at Noble House, and with this, we have been very proud to, to say that we've been able to get our advertisements placed in really key online platforms, such as the New York Times, Wall Street Journal. You'll see our advertisements here. When these adverts are created, they must be done in quite the array of formats to ensure that they are compliant to Google standards, but also that they can be legible by everyone's devices. And these are some other entities where we have 
had placement in terms of the new Canaan, the Live New Canaan campaign being placed across all of these phenomenal websites that you have in front of in front of you here. The realtor.com, Zillow.com, CNN, Fox News, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Rolling Stone, Rolling Stone rather, Forbes, New York Post, doing, doing very well there. In terms of public relations, Boston Herald, that's been both digital and print, as is the case, I believe, for all of these here. But our pillar messaging and content continues to be spread and picked up with that consistent branding, with a continuous push for both digital and print publications, national and local, which are a demographic match to the goals of the Live New Canaan campaign. Uh, and to date, we've received in excess of 15 editorial calls from different publications requesting additional information, media assets, learning more about the Live New Canaan campaign. Search engine optimization to provide a brief overview is the process through which we ameliorate livenewcanaan.org in order to increase its chances of appearing number one in various search engines such as Google, Bing, Baidu for pertinent keywords. So for example, if you're searching for um, best schools in New England, the objective is to have livenewcanaan.org appear there. Homes for sale in Connecticut, likewise, have livenewcanon.org appear there. And so you'll see we, we relaunched, redesigned rather, our website in March and April. Uh, previous to that, the amount of keywords for which livenewcanon.org was ranking was minimal, if any. There are fewer than 10. And we've since increased it to now rank for over 274 keywords in the top 100. Hi, Hillary. Oh, pardon me. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes, oh, we can hear you. Sorry, somebody was talking in the background. Oh, <laughs> not dry. Uh, but you'll see we're also ranking internationally. Oh. 28 countries listed so far. What's great about this is it's positioning us very well to reach fruition in August and September, such that it doesn't matter if you're in New England or throughout the USA, or even as we're seeing internationally, livenewcanon.org is increasingly dominating the, the local SEO sphere. Any questions uh, so far? Anybody? What's the SEO snowball that you have at the bottom? So uh, Snowball is, is jargon that's used to, uh, it, it refers to imagine a snowball at the top of the mountain. As it continues downward, it's gradually accumulating more mass and more speed, uh, such as the effect that we also see with SEO, where setting us up with such a strong foundation means that with time, the efforts continue to grow. And so when we say reaching fruition in August, September, that's meaning where we believe the first round of SEO content, both on-site and off-site, will provide the greatest results. Thank you. Anybody else? All right, Tim, carry yep. on. Yeah, Tucker. Oh. Yep, Bob. Sorry, if I, if I may. Um, Tim, I, I actually just uh, put it in a chat to you, but I think the cost per click is actually great considering that in the real estate sector, the cost per click is can be 20 to 30 percent higher than what you're achieving. So that's that's pretty amazing. My question is, with all the data, is how do we look at conversion for what we're doing, right? How do we measure the efficacy of the work, as I wrote? And how do we make sure we're not just talking to ourselves? Because I've got to assume that while the organic growth is great, a lot of that can possibly be attributed, attributed to us following ourselves, which has a different, a different end game, right? It's still good. But if our goal is to bring new people into the community, how are we measuring that? And how are we understanding the efficacy of what we're doing and what we're all spending money on? Excellent. That's a that's a very good question. And could you remind me of your your name, please? I, I don't have it. In it it's okay, Bob Doran, Tim. Thank you. Bob Doran. Cheers. Yeah. Uh, so, Bob, with this very good question, what it what we're able to do is track the location of each digital marketing avenue and how these individuals came to arrive on the website. When it comes to our ads, both social and through Google Ads. Uh, for those, while it won't necessarily say Jane Smith 
from Manhattan clicked on this advertisement, it will provide us with the IP address and the location um, as to where they arrive. But in terms of ensuring that these are quality growth rather than simply us following us, we're able to see whether it's through Instagram or through Facebook, the, the user profiles of these individuals following us and ascertain what is the location that they're coming to us from and is it matching our targeted demos, demographics. For these adverts, in terms of where we target them, you'll notice that within New Canaan, you shouldn't be seeing these, these advertisements, but as soon as you are in our target demos, that's when you should be being targeted with, with these because we are able to geo-target all of our advertising efforts. I hope that answers the question. It, it, it does. The only other part of that, and it's very forward-looking, I understand, is how do we start to understand and talk about, in this group certainly, because of what mm -hmm. our what the directive is, how do we talk about conversion and how that's moving to conversion? Exactly. And so within the website, we've installed pixels that are able to track. Here, the goal is bring all of this attention and traffic to the website. Then once they arrive on the website, we have pixels installed that are able to track every user's movement within that page and see where they are clicking. Are they going to the real estate form? Are they getting in touch with, the, with, a, with someone from uh, are they getting in contact with a realtor and going through the livenewcanon.org website? And with constant communication with, with TDAC, with the Board of Realtors, with Nancy Greenspawn, we're able to keep, keep a close pulse as to ensuring how, uh, how often is the phone ringing? Are we getting the results that the campaign is striving for? Great. Thanks, Tim. All right. Uh, email marketing... Boom, boom, public relations, yes. SEO, SEO snowball, website development, excellent. So this was the first, <laughs> we always like to use the analogy that the website is akin to the center of, center of our galaxy, it's the sun, and all these other marketing channels are the planets that rotate around the sun. Without a strong sun, all these other things won't be, won't be as healthy and so it's, it's crucial that our website is bright and beautiful and growing. <laughs> um, well, I suppose that's the extent of the analogy there as it pertains to, to our universe and my knowledge of astronomy. But in terms of the website, we took it from essentially being a, a one-page business card to now a multiple, multi-device responsive website that went, underwent multiple design iterations with focus group feedbacks, having the creative, the editing, the user interface analysis. We successfully, and thank you, Tucker, for your help here, uh, integrating with the town of New Canaan as well as the Chamber of Commerce to uh, embed their directory and their, their business directory and their events calendar as well. We also integrated the Flex MLS plugin here, and we curated the aesthetic just to make it easier for the eyes of the users that are joining our website. Uh, after development was completed, it was comprehensively tested, the website was launched. We have since added the search functionality. We have content revision and addition per page. So it's, it's ensuring that the website is remaining constantly updated, constantly pinging Google to say, hey, changes have been made. This website is a growing authority within our niche and you ought to have us rank better as a result. So we have weekly updates that are going to the news section. And we've also most recently employed that form fill on the real estate page. Part of, Bob, this goes back to your question, is ensuring that we are having the conversions. In terms of future steps, we would like to employ a call tracking number within that. And this is, this is currently in discussion with uh, New Canaan Board of Realtors. And here yeah, I've, I've included a wonderful testimonial from, from Chris DeMuth, uh, lauding us on our efforts. Upcoming, with our reopening post-COVID, it's positioning us well for increasing the amount of quality content that we're able to gather. Our interview calendar for the next two months is full. 
So we have all of the different venues that are reopening. We have scheduled videos for our, for our newcomers here, really highlighting the increasing diversity within New Canaan and refreshing the videos that live on that homepage uh, and also discussing the various current events that are going on uh, in addition to other developments. With this, we're able to employ drone footage and photography, and this continues to be capture and planning this as essential uh, to document the seasonality of life within New Canaan. In terms of the next steps, by end of July, we're aiming to exceed 2,000 followers on Facebook and 3,000 on Instagram. And with increased push on influencer marketing, it's positioning us well to leverage the local trendsetters and their large follow followings uh, and overall continue, continue rising the Live New Canaan campaign. And that's all I have uh, for you today. Are there questions? Um, it's uh, Jack Trefero. Uh, I just... I just want to tell you how great I think this uh, site is and the content. Uh, I am a real estate agent, so I have to tell you, I do use this and I do uh, send pieces of this to my clients. It's uh, amazing to me what you have done. Uh, and I think it's uh, very helpful to tell the story of the town at this particular moment because we have a rising wave right now and it's uh, very helpful, very good. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Um, Tim, can you take us back? This is Tucker. Can you take us back to just where we see each other's faces now? Oh, yes, that, that would work. Uh, and I can stop. There we go. There you go. Perfect. Um, okay. Anybody have any other questions or feedback for, um, for Tim and his team? As you so know, I just, sorry, it's Alan Magrino. I just had one question. What was the engagement rate on uh, Instagram? I believe I have that included here. I certainly hope so. Um, on Instagram, uh, yes, that, that engagement rate has increased by 140.55%. Oh, I realize I've stopped screen sharing. Uh, Tucker, would you like I saw that, but what is the rate? Is it, is it the industry standard of 23% or? Oh, in, in terms of this, that it, we're now at 2,100 uh, engagements within the past one month period alone. Uh, which is far far above industry industry standard for this, particularly for the for the niche that LiveNewCanaan.org is is filling. To to be able to reach this engagement level in such a short amount of time is really encouraging. Okay, great, thank you. I just I do have just one more question. So your income stream, you accept you have ads on there from stores and uh, paid ads. Is, is that what those are? Uh, no, no, we, no. we, we don't okay. have. I, I just trying to understand. Okay. No worries. Uh, no, we we do not do not offer ad placements on the LiveNewCanaan.org page at okay. this time. Okay, because those descriptions of the of the stores are great and are you know are, are very helpful for somebody outside of town to realize the different services that are offered here. It's terrific. Okay. Yeah, the, the okay. Board of Realtors is really um, fronting the lion's share of the, of the expenses related to the Live New Canaan campaign. As you okay. know, TDAC also contributed to a portion right. of that, but, um, but it's really um, more the, uh, the, the, and Nancy Greenspawn and Melissa have really been carrying the torch with the help of everybody from, from the mm -hmm. Noble House team. Yeah. Yeah. And, and in the chamber with their directory and yeah. the um, calendar as direct feeds have been has been influential in being able to provide so much more content, which is so. Yep. Yeah, and we're, I'm constantly sending stuff over to, to them. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, I can't remember what it was now, Tim, but you guys had a request for, I guess it was restaurants. Now that restaurants were opening, you said, did we have any photography? And I quickly <laughs> sent it out to my whole restaurant group. And I think you got a little overwhelmed. I'm sorry, but I had them send you photos. And all of a sudden they said, we got them. We got plenty. So um, that was good that everybody had, had something to contribute. And I think for, for us being, being the conduit for this, it's been, it's been so exciting to be a part of this and also see just how responsive and enthusiastic the New Canaan community has, has been for this campaign to be 
the success that it is. Uh, and so working, working with the Chamber of Commerce, with TMAC, with the Board of Realtors, uh, it, it really has been an absolute pleasure and we're really excited to see how this progresses. Right. Just have a question on, on the local business um, <laughs> listings. How are, how are those, the order of the local business decided? In, in terms, terms of, of being profiles? Well, when you click on local businesses on the website, right. it, it seems Arnold is paid to be right at the top of the page. Uh, so, so that is the coincidence at this time, next time according to the recently modified uh, business. We're able to manipulate that though, so it's, it would be in your standard offer numeric. Okay. I missed your first response, but... Yes, yeah, sorry, you broke up there for a minute, Tim. What did you start to say before the alphanumeric? Oh, that this is to do with most recently modified listings. Oh. Ah, uh, okay. So whoever's active is... Mm. Uh, garbage in, garbage out. Yeah, but, yeah, um, Tim has the ability to go in and change the chronological on all those. So Indeed. that might be a very good thing to kind of just... <laughs> Get it back to alpha and you may, yes. Yeah, yeah, right. Heather. And then on mine, um, well, two things. The picture they used on mine is probably from 15 years ago, and it's also <laughs> my old address from six months ago. And also on the site, whoever runs it might want to go through because some of those stores have gone out of business. So, so part of that is that we, from the chamber, um, as part of Explore New Canaan, we send out a thing, gosh, every six months or so, asking everyone to update their listings and make sure we get current pictures and if your phone number's changed or websites have changed. So we only know what we know. But as far as taking some out, that's a really good point, Heather, and I should probably spend some time looking at that and make sure. In fact, I know I do because today I sat down with the map and I was making all the edits to the map and so I know a lot. So Tim, I can... I can help with that and tell you guys where we need to make some changes. So who do I email all of our information to? Uh, that actually welcome. gets emailed to Tucker because that part of the site is driven by the directory. Right. So send it to me, Heather. Okay. And then I'll update it on our end and that will automatically feed to, to the Live New Canaan site. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Anybody else? No? Okay. Tim, thank you. We'll, thank you. It's great. We're happy to hear from you anytime. So if you have any major changes or any big news for us or you need help, please reach out. You know where to find us. Cheers. Thank you very much. And have thank, a you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Thank All you. right. Um, next up, uh, we've got uh, Beth and Nancy with us. They're going to give us an update on the Land Trust, uh, the Sculpture Trail and the efforts going on there. So ladies, I'm not sure who wants to take it away, but... I'm going to start and then hopefully if our technology works, we'll be able to play you a, a short video uh, that was yeah. created to promote the sculpture trail and highlights all the beautiful pieces of art that have now been uh, fully installed around town. Um, so uh, I think that'll be worth the watch and then Beth will uh, come up after the video and talk about what we're looking to do to merchandise and promote the trail through its full exhibition uh, at the end of October. So uh, first of all, Tim, I, I, maybe he left. Um, yeah. but that, that was really great. And I was looking through the mobile site before I um, joined you here, or as he was speaking rather. And I noticed that um, it's really great that you have all of the land trust preserves on there, but I think it might be really beneficial to everybody to have a specific tile related directly to the sculpture trail. And uh, we've got a ton of assets that we can use to populate that, that uh, Beth and I have been collecting uh, over the last several months. Um, so I think that that would be worthwhile to, to, to uh, highlight as its own separate thing, um, because of course we branded it as its own separate thing. Um, and so with that, uh, you know, it, as you know, and hopefully have all seen and visited or at least driven by, we've got all of our eight sculptures up um, around New Canaan. Several of them are available as a drive-by experience. The town hall, you know, I think is just beautiful. And uh, 
We've got the one up on 123. So we're capturing a lot of uh, attention and visibility just by the sheer nature of those locations. So that's, you know, I think a really positive thing. Um, and then as for the others, you know, so we've got in terms of drive-bys, I guess you've got town hall, you've got passages, you've got um, the Carriage Barn Art Center. And I know I'm missing one, Beth, which one, um, the, in terms of being able to see. <coughs> I think the rest you still, you have to walk in. So oh. it so requires it, some exercise. Yeah. Okay, so we've gotten great feedback and um, as many of you also know, and thanks to the expert uh, help and care of Mr. Duran here, we produced our uh, uh, sculpture soiree last Friday evening. Um, we had over 180 people uh, actually register to attend the event. And I think as Bob will attest, we have pushed the envelope in terms of uh, Zoom <laughs> production <laughs> capabilities, but uh, all said, I think it went really well. It was very fast paced and um, we got great feedback. It was highly informative, live and, and video roll in uh, activity. And, um, you know, so I, it, was, it was a very well produced show, if you will. And we kept it really right within an hour and there was a lot of moving parts to it. So thank you again, Bob. And I think it did a lot to elevate Certainly the land trust, but importantly, the New Canaan Sculpture Trail and New Canaan. And we did have, we had a poll at the beginning of the event um, asking people where they were tuning in from. And of course, the beauty of something like this was that we had people from outside of New Canaan uh, tuning in. So that was nice as well. Um, and they didn't quite get the gorilla bit, but uh, <laughs> we, had, <laughs> we had McCain and Gorilla uh, also make a cameo appearance within one of our video Rollins. So that was really clever too. So, um, you know, I think all in, we're just, we couldn't be happier as a board and, and uh, you know, hopefully our members of the land trust feel the same way. Um, and, and again, we're just thrilled that we've had these eight really remarkable sculptors and sculptures and sculptors who have made themselves available to us and really helped to um, educate, you know, our people. They all spoke at the event and, and I think that was also very well received. Um, we, you know, Beth will talk a little bit about the interactive um, opportunities that we'll have going forward. But, um, you know, we, one of the things that we've done prior to this is in, enlisted local photographers to come and we've got really a fabulous range of um, expert photography of some of these sculptures that's, that are just exquisite. So that helped us A, create the assets that we have and then B, we'll be, um, you know, using them going forward as well. Um, and then I'm gonna just do a quick intro. We did correct, uh, create a little three minute piece that we think is sort of evergreen lives to talk about the sculpture trail in, in total. Um, so I want to show that <coughs> now. Um, and so Tucker, do you want me to share I, my screen? I think, I've, I think I've got it here. Let me give it a try. Okay. If I can't do it, then you so, can. Worth noting that we uh, enlisted uh, a young uh, NCHS grad who just completed his freshman year at Chapman University, uh, Nico Savini, who was uh, really did a remarkable, and I think he does some work with some of the realtors in town. He has great drone footage. So the, the, I invite you to actually, you know, look at the, the video online because the Zoom doesn't even do justice to, you know, the, the uh, resolution of, of the video. But I, I do think it's worth taking a quick look at here. And, and all of us should mute ourselves because that will help yep. the audio on the video. Oh, okay. And right. I'm clicking here on this one, the new canvas yeah. go that it's one. A little red box and, and yep. then hopefully it'll go to full screen. And if it doesn't, then just press the little icon at the bottom. Okay. So Bob, what do we do about the audio? Nancy, you may have to, it, I hear it's it. whoever's sharing the screen, yeah. Oh. I, I'm doing it, you can't hear it? No, this is what happened last, oh, you gotta take your headphones out. I have to take your buds out. Yeah. Wait, I'm gonna start again, sorry. Yeah, we had that same problem. Good to know. Summer and the New Canaan Sculpture Trail is finally here created to commemorate Earth Day's 50th anniversary, now an inspiration in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. 
celebrating the connection between art and nature, celebrating Canaan's special places. Over the course of five months, nine amazing artists created eight remarkable sculptures at Land Trust Preserves, the Carriage Barn Art Center, and at New Canaan Town Hall. Andrew Alex sculpture displayed before you is a kinetic sculpture of stainless steel and a highly polished stainless steel sphere. It's a very um, rectangular form in one way, so it has a contrast to the trees around it, but it also blends at the same time because it, it is constructed out of raw two by four wood, right? So it, it has actually a connection with the land without trying to imitate the land. This is the, the Seventh Circuit Classic Labyrinth, which is perhaps one of the, the oldest labyrinth structures around. It, it, it's a free path, it's an open path, and it's one that once you've chosen, uh, you, you can follow without distraction. And that allows you to, to, to be able to internalize some of your thoughts. is of an abstracted contemporary tree inspired by nature. This tree does not compete with natural trees, but act as a modern complement. For me, it's like a puzzle or pixelated composition. But I would rather have people come up to it and give them what they want to do. It does celebrate nature um, by virtue of seeing the participant in nature reflected and refracted in the, in the, uh, the portal. His arches, these organic shapes sort of lead up to this wonderful blossoming bloom. I hope people, when they walk by or jog by or walk with their dog, will look at the surrounding in a different way than they did before. Sculpture in some ways can um, get people away from the screen for a couple of minutes and try and engage with a physical object that someone created and uh, find it meaningful. This year has brought many challenges along with silver linings. We hope our New Canaan Sculpture Trail inspires you to get outside and enjoy the beauty of nature. We look forward to seeing you out on the trail. Fabulous. There we go. I agree. That was great. Uh, thank you. Uh, you might recognize the voice. That's Aaron Leflin, the executive director at the narration at the beginning and the end. Uh, yeah, and the uh, the cinematography by uh, Nico Savini really is fabulous. He has all the equipment and a really great eye. So we're very happy with that. And I think it really shows the, the range of the sculptures, that bloom that's on gr the Greenlink. We were there the weekend that it was installed. And it's amazing how many people went by and said, wow, what is this? And it was, we placed it there, We the exhibition committee chose that spot because it's so close to the nature center and there's so many kids that are, well, in a normal year, there might be more when they're having their camp or I guess they are having their camp or when they're having their preschool program, but it really is uh, spectacular. And all of them are different and very many of the materials and impact. And it's really fun to go visit them at different times of the day. So we're really happy with it. And, you know, our objective going into creating the New Canaan Sculpture Share with the Carriage Barn Art Center, which we haven't mentioned, they've been a fantastic partner, um, was to raise awareness within Can New Canaan and the area of the New Canaan Land Trust, which many people didn't even know about that much five years ago or eight years ago when we didn't have any open to public uh, trails. And now we have almost 10. And you know we're a lot more active, and we thought, what a great way to engage people. And the one of the key points was that it was also celebrating the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. And of course, we only had one sculpture up on Earth Day, but mm -hmm. I guess that really hasn't really mattered. And we were able to extend the whole exhibition to the end of October. So we have a lot of time to get engaged our community, 
and for what your mission is, you know, we have ideas of how we can do a little bit to engage the broader community and the people in New York who are coming to visit and whoever else might be thinking about New Canaan, but you definitely have assets that we'll want to hear more about that we could leverage this really spectacular um, exhibition. So everything's up just as a couple weeks ago, we had our party and we're, we have a you know, number of things planned during the summer. Uh, first of all, we're also putting up more content on our website. We did interviews with all the artists and we're gonna have like 15 minutes or so of each artist talking about their piece and what the significance is and how it relates to Earth Day and you know, how it relates to other works that they've done. So that will be you know, a, a bevy of content that people are really interested will wanna take a look at. Um, next week, we're joining um, the Carriage Barn uh, Tucker in the Art in Window event that you're having up at the um, pop-up barn. And we're going to, you know, bring basically, you know, information, photos, videos on iPads that people can look and see what we have. Because just to tell them they're there, even though some of them are driven by the ones that are visible, it's, it's kind of nice to go in, into one of the hidden meadows and find these sculptures. Oh, the other one you can drive by, Nancy, you're right. Bay 639 on Davenport Ridge. There was a That's port. right. Yeah, I, I, that one didn't come to my head, but you can see that right from the road. In fact, it's kind of surprising because it's all made out of two by fours, right in the middle of that meadow as you're heading uh, right. west, uh, going towards Stanford or east, heading towards Ponus Ridge. So we're gonna be in the pop-up park next uh, week on the July 2nd. Uh, we're looking, we're going to tie in with um, what the Carriage Barn is doing in the end of October, which is called Capturing New Canaan. It's the third year they're doing it. And it's when um, artists go out and paint and take photographs for a couple weeks in October and then it becomes an exhibition. And so we're, we're going to be part of that kind of mandate where you can go, you know, do your plan art work or there will also be a whole wall in the back of the carriage barn featuring the photographs. And as, as Nancy mentioned, we <clears> have <throat> some amazing photography and you know the, the, the portals that are in the field at Hannon Field, every time you go to different light, it takes on a mm. different color. It reflects and it refracts. So it's really amazing. And Elaine Lloyd has done <laughs> an absolutely amazing job in capturing all of the work. Um, we, um, we're also going to invite one of the artists to come to that event at, um, the, at the Carriage Barn, which is, again, the artist um, Anthony Hines May, who um, has, is, it's his ashen, that it, which is the tree with the pixelated top that's right in front of the Carriage Barn, and we'd like to have him do a demo. And we're looking at when we can bring other artists on, on uh, site to talk. But again, some of that was kind of restricted from you know, what we've been spending our time on, but they have so much to talk and about three or four of our artists are professors, so they do like to talk. <laughs> and uh, part of our um, event last week was a silent auction and Nancy put together a docent tour with Robin Hoffman from Artscape. And we raised uh, $1,450 just from that. So the, the idea is that she's going to, you know, take people around to all eight sculptures and really tell them, you know, how to read what, how to read sculptures, how to think about it, and then talk about these specific uh, sculptures that have been pr produced as part of the New Canaan Sculpture Trail. Uh, so that's, to me, that just says, you know, this is kind of, people kind of like that idea. So, you know, is I don't know, if, you know, if we're ever trying to do stuff that, kind of guide people when they come to New Canaan from New York, or I guess we should probably go meet with all the realtors, <laughs> Nancy. Mm. <laughs> do that, you know, right when COVID hit. We were yeah, all... we were scheduled for with the, right. We, I think we need to get rescheduled. Um, yeah, they have, uh, they have Zoom calls, you know, like everybody else, so you guys yeah. could get on their agenda. Well, and then, um, you know what we haven't mentioned, Beth, and I, I don't mean to jump in, but I am. Go ahead. Um, is the app. Uh, we have an app, uh, a, right. a mobile app called AutoCast, and um, which is specifically designed to talk about um, outdoor and public art exhibitions. So it's a national app, but it very you know prominent at the top of the thing is New Canaan. And then uh, we had Ravis was is the sponsor of our app, so they've got a little splash page that you know pops up at the top. But you can go in, and a lot of people have asked us about creating a, a map. A physical map like you might see on a house tour or something like that but this autocast app 
actually has that map and then in e each individual location, you know, shares information about the preserve, about the artist, and even has an audio uh, sound bites of the artist talking about their work. So that's something that at the individual preserves, we've created posters that have both a QR code in case they want to donate to our worthy cause or also uh, download the uh, app on, on uh, Google or, or the app store. So uh, and that's another element that we really haven't talked about a lot. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we have signage at all eight sculptures and then nicely, although it's a little later than we want it, we're also getting property signs for all the, mm. those properties. So that when you drive by, there's a very you know, long lasting sign that we sold um, sponsorship for, for, but the, their sponsorship is on the post. It's not as conspicuous as saying that this is the Hannon by field. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so um, I would love to hear any thoughts that you might have. Oh, we're also looking at creating a commemorative commemorative book with some of these wonderful photographs um yeah. coffee table that would be more around the end of it uh which again is the end of october and that's when we right after that have our our annual uh, members meet, membership meeting so is this I mean, something we, that you all hope to to do every year we we, we, ah, we, we shaking around <laughs> we started out thinking you know maybe every five years whatever but we're thinking every other year and it would not probably be tied to earth day it turns out it was actually better to install these right. uh, sculptures in in may than in the cold months of late you know day, days of late march the big very right. early part of spring we'd like to do it every other year i think it's really good for the town we you know we got 70 um proposals from artists from throughout the area uh, and so and I think it's been a really good experience for these artists so um, we'd like to do it again I just don't think we have kind of the manpower the the land trust has one uh, professional paid professional on staff who's who's Aaron so it takes a lot of volunteer time we had a lot of volunteers that did you know volunteer to help us but when it became more virtual it ended up being more or less you know the organization doing a lot of the work so anyway, yes, we'd love to do it in two years. Beth or Nancy, is there any chance of keeping any of these? I mean, particularly, I keep talking about the one on Canoe and 123. Any chance of making any of these permanent installations, art in nature, permanent installations, which creates another reason for a you know, New Canaan destination, but some of them, are, they're, they're all so beautiful in the environment they've been installed in. The one that is permanent is the labyrinth. So that's always going to be there. You know, it will get grown up with a little weeds and stuff like that. So we'll have to, you know, create, you know, take extra care of it. So that's, that's in Watson Simonton. Um, some of them, and including the passages in Hand and Field, were not designed as permanent sculpture, like it's steel, but not stainless steel. Uh, and it, I don't know, you know, if, if we, I guess if we purchased it, <laughs> It has a pretty big ticket price. Well, I, I would probably love to have it there permanently, you yeah. know, sell it. All of these pieces are for sale. And if they do sell, we get a significant, uh, you know, percentage of the of the proceeds. So that-, that would be Along our, with the carriage barn. Right, you know, split, I think it's 40% of the sale price. So, so that's pretty good. But, um, you know, for instance, the Boro piece in front of the town hall, that's $75,000. So it's and that, that would be fantastic there. I mean, I just love it, but I don't think that's how. Uh, I'm not sure we'll be spending our money that way, right, how much, Kevin? <laughs> how much? Is, how much is passages? Uh, about the about the same, I think. That much? Yeah. Yeah, but I, you know, so he's had to already go in and make some remediations to the dichotic film, or however you pronounce it, but. Um, so I don't know how robustly it will last throughout the seasons, um, but I think, you know, if it doesn't sell, he'd probably last, leave it there for as long as, you know, it looks good enough, I, w I would think. Yeah. Else? It'd be kind of neat to uh, have one of them uh, added to the uh, Jenny and Meadow at Wa Waveney Park uh, as that meadow becomes more mm. yeah. accessible. Yeah, that would be beautiful. But um, the, I mean, in terms of permanence, I, they're all kind of ephemeral. Um, not not Ring Tower, I would say. No, not Borough. 
Boro, but yeah, and Ring Tower is very, I mean, that's a good deal. We hope that'll sell. That's $7,500 if anybody wants that. that back. That's the one at Still Pond. It's yeah. really cool looking. It would yeah. look good in somebody's front or backyard, I yeah. think. Uh, but Bloom is, I think, pretty yeah, nice. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and certainly the other one, um, the uh, Basics 39, because that's just two by fours. So Not treated. That's yeah. a bit <clears throat> do something like that as a commission that would be then a more permanent thing i wanted to well, remind, remind people that we have our live art show uh going on at the firefly sanctuary and uh i was out there last night for the next two weeks it's going to be really incredible oh so, i almost went last night. you went last night yeah how was it it's I've great been, yeah. it's it's so been so hot it's perfect for i know firefly. i was thinking of going tonight we were going to go tonight we almost went uh -oh. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. that's good uh, to know. That Thank was you. another one of our popular auction items, and I, I think Bob Duran got beat on that one, but uh, I don't know what that ended up going for. But that was a private viewing at the Firefly Sanctuary. So I, I was hoping you'd double down, but uh, yeah, it was because yeah. it, it is one of the most amazing experiences New Canaan offers. It's yeah. Incredible. It Maybe the, yeah. the it's the only private one in the United States. That's so really yeah. cool. Which we should create some sort of a plaque about that. But anyway, mm -hmm. we digress. So, all but, right. Well, I think we've probably covered enough. We welcome any questions or any thoughts. Anybody have any questions for uh, for the team here, or just congratulations? Really, I mean, I remember when you came to us and looked for looking for our support, and thank um, you for your support. Uh, well, I think I think yeah. this is such a perfect COVID um, safe way to enjoy an, an exhibit. So you got lucky there. And I know we were worried originally that, um, you know, maybe it wasn't going to happen at all just with everything going on. But I think you're right. I think we learned that we were able to, you were able to pull it off. Um, well, thank you. Okay. Thank you for Thanks inviting a lot. us. Bye-bye, everybody. One last thing. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. One All right. So for the, wait, for the had rest one of more us. Thing. Which I think is really meaningful for this group is that uh, you may have missed, we didn't really promote it, but Miss Sanford here was actually featured on a segment on um, WABC TV on, in New York uh, pr uh, from the reporter Sandy, Sandy Kenyon, who did like a four minute piece about you know, the sculpture trail and New Canaan. So and oh, that, wow. that, that was on, that, it aired on Earth Day. And he, so. And he interviewed me via Zoom, and we gave him all the footage from Nico, and it looked really nice. I'll share it with you, Tucker. Okay, great. The number one station in the country. Yeah. You know, singles market station. Send it to me, and I'll send it out to the group. Oh, yeah, yeah. So anyway. Uh-oh. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> you never know. All right, everybody. Thank you, uh, Beth and Nancy. Well okay, done. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Um, Nancy Geary, I didn't tell you that I was going to ask you, but do you have any later any updates on October for Design that you want to let the group know about? Well, it's interesting for me. I'm going to reach out to Beth because she had originally we discussed having the trail be part of October for Design, but at that point they had to take the sculpture down before October. So I'll certainly follow up with her on that to get that added. Um, you know, as you might expect, it's it's getting harder and harder because virtually everything has to be remote now. I mean, we have we have a we have programs, we have commitments from people, but we don't. We're not going to have any in-person events. It looks like so. We're still working. I mean, Laura is working a lot. I'm in conversations with people about ways to make some kind of experiences work, um, but it's going to be hard. So I think what we'll do is sort of a soft October. Mm -hmm. this year and have a more robust October next year when we can have the Modern House Day Tour and other sort of important events. Yeah, okay. I, I mean, the, the website looks good, the calendar looks good, it's just that there just is not enough stuff. I mean, I think having the sculpture trail, um, you know, maybe the glass house can be open. A couple of people that had planned to do programs didn't want to do them remotely, they want to push them out a year. So, <laughs> You know, we're just juggling. Not everybody feels completely comfortable presenting on Zoom and sharing their screens. They'd rather be in a room. So we have to respect that too. Um, but we're, you know, we're going ahead and we'll do the best we can for this year. And I think we'll learn things that will help us next year. So I agree. Total yep. loss. Great. 
we'll be in touch, Nancy, and we'll see what we can do. Yeah. Greg, how's it going being open? So we've been open only one day. That's this past Monday. We'll be open again tomorrow. So we're doing a Friday through Monday opening. And we opened on Monday, but then we had Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday to digest our experience. There were no problems whatsoever on the site. Um, attendance was not all that strong on Monday, and it probably won't be on Mondays in general. Mm -hmm. But uh, the ticket sales, which are, of course, all in advance, are much stronger on the weekend days. Good. Okay. Cross our fingers for you. Um, the other item I put on the agenda was just TDAC goals. You know, we, I felt like we were so focused all of last year and, and you know, the, the effort that we all put into all of these events, I think is really, um, we should be congratulated for all of that. But I'm, I'm wondering what people think going forward now um, into this, you know, into the fall, um, what you all think we should be working on um, more events or should we be doing more work around economic development? I feel like everything is, is changing so fast. Things that we were priorities six months ago, now all of a sudden things have changed and uh, the real estate market all of a sudden is very hot. So just wondering what you all are thinking in terms of us um, as a group and what projects we should be really focusing on or what effort we should be looking toward. Doctor, could I mention, uh, you know, the state's encouraging towns to have um, long-term recovery uh, strategies. Yep. And um, I'm not sure what they are yet, but I think this, this committee is the like logical group to work on that. Okay. Anybody else see any emerging topics that they think we should start diving into? I, I was going to say that the same thing because I know we're helping. You know, we we went very quick and helped the real you know restaurants. Then um, everybody who was um, retail, but you know our second story. A lot of the second stories are suffering, or people who are you know entrepreneurs here in our town. So I think you're right, Kevin. I think there's got to be some sort of um, look at all businesses in general. You know, what can we be doing? Okay. So, so I think it's been excellent that we've been telling the story on the Live New Canaan. And you're right, there's this big wave coming into town. Maybe we should be finding out from uh, that wave what is attracting them to town, which I think is pretty obvious. But still, some questioning of them may reveal what we should be working on and maintaining in the future. Yeah, I was thinking about that with Live New Canaan, even how we can make sure that they're getting, you know, they're finding out about the, the sculpture trail and, and right. Live New Canaan. I mean, I think the only people that know who they are are the, 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 the realtors that rent it to them, right. I guess, right. right? Yeah, but there, and there is a, you know, probably a good questionnaire about what, what is attracting you to New Canaan. Again, we know a lot of what that is, but with, uh, this new event in our country, there could be other things we could discover about that group that should be kept, preserved or yeah. developed. But I also think like you can ask that question, like if, are you interested in theater? Well, we have this, this, and this. Are you interested right. in this? We have this, 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 and this. Right. Because mm -hmm. there's so many hidden gems. And I agree with you totally. Of, uh, oh, sorry, Jack. Just in terms of the um, entrepreneurs and service community, newcomers to town are also seeking new doctors or, or local attorneys and, and local businesses. So since we are seeing a surge in this one particular area of the market, um, how we can think about how it can segue into other supporting industries within our community mm -hmm. um, would be valuable. I, I know the newcomers group is, is so wonderful. Um, and I wonder if we can dovetail something with them mm -hmm. or whether they're do doing enough to promote those other sectors of, of our local economy. And yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'm wondering if these people are even joining newcomers or even know about newcomers. I don't know. I mean, they, they, they came to New Canaan during COVID. Um, it was a close 
train ride away, they got out. But that's been my biggest question is I think, I think they know about downtown, obviously. I think they see everything that's happening downtown. Um, but I do, I would love to, back to Bob's conversion question, you know, I'd love to think that some of these folks would end up wanting to stay here. But I don't know how we even make contact with them and make sure they know about newcomers. I, I think we should ask newcomers that question. Like, what are you doing for outreach? Like, where do you get your referrals? Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I think they work directly with the real estate agents mm -hmm. in some way to connect with the people yeah. as soon as possible. I mean, obviously, and maybe the newcomers, the um, activities of newcomers happens before someone buys a home. It's um, newcomers before you're new <laughs> to town. Right. Um, with some communications about those other sectors that we have to offer, both in the arts and in, in business. It's harder with the renters. Um, so like Stephanie Radman, who, who runs the town greeter program, she goes and gets from the town clerk's office, she gets all of the property transfers, she reaches out uh, with a postcard in the mail, that's easy to do. You don't always know that on, on people that are coming in and renting for a period of time. So I think it's gonna take a little more effort and I think it is gonna be directly uh, related to how much we can ask the, the real estate community to work with us. Um, but I think, I think, BJ, back to your point that maybe what we should think about doing between now and our next meeting is developing sort of a questionnaire slash information piece mm -hmm. that we could get to the real estate community to ask them to share. And, and listen, if someone came out and used um, ABC real estate agent for uh, a rental agreement, they would love to convert that into a sale. So they're going to want to stay talking to them, selling New Canaan even more. Uh, sure. Anyway. I'd also be curious, Tucker, how many people who are sellers, and a lot of people are opportunistically put in their places on the market now, um, how many are staying in New Canaan? Yeah, you, you went out on a minute there. So how many how many came and how many are staying? Yeah, well, of the sellers, you know, a lot of people are putting their houses on the market after oh, right. having waited oh. a long while and whether they're staying and whether we can capture that somehow um, by contacting the, uh, surveying the uh, sellers in the past 60 days. Mm. Although the realtors probably didn't know that data just as well. They okay. certainly have a sense of it. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. that's a fair point. If we could ask the realtors, and maybe maybe by asking them to give us anecdotally what they know, how many how many are staying, where they're moving to. So maybe for the next meeting, I should ask Lori Kelly and uh, Melissa Rumbaya <laughs> from Board of Realtors to come and mm -hmm. and uh, join us at our meeting. All of our assignment could be to shoot me some questions that you think that we should ask of them in advance of them coming to meet with us. I can send them over to them, and they can come prepared, and and that when we can sort of. I get to the bottom of some of this with them on a Zoom call or if we're meeting in person by then. Does that make sense? Yeah. And what about even inviting um, the newcomers club? Yep. I yeah. can ask them too. Mm -hmm. Sure. I think you should bring in the town greeter because it seems to me yep. that, that it would not be hard to get the realtors to give rental you know, a lease information. They're not going to have to tell about what the rent is or anything like that. Just the person's name and the town greeter could drop things off on the front steps. It wouldn't even have to go inside. And maybe somebody that has a, a better sense of the town, maybe they rented just to get out of town, or out of New York, mm -hmm. have a better sense of the town as their time here progresses. They <clears throat> right. to look for property. I mean, I think that, I think that the renters you need to, you need to, they're the ones you really need to educate if you're experiencing it, but they also may go back. Right. Well, and if we could look at that data, because anecdotally, completely anecdotally, um, I, I, you know, any number of us maybe, but I happen to know several people between Westport and New Canaan who came out to do exactly, Nancy, what you're saying, to come out for a month and then extended the lease to several months through August. And uh, at least a couple of those people that I know have said, now, now I want to buy that house, right? I don't want to leave. So it's, it's happening. Uh, so is this an anomaly? Do I know the two people who've done this, the only two people, or are there a hundred people who are doing this? So the realtors probably have a sense of that data, and that would be yeah. good for us to know what the behavioral change is that's happening. 
The other entity that is probably trying to evaluate all this information is certainly the Board of Education. They want to know how many more students we could potentially have in the system next year. I know on the four o'clock call, uh, we've heard from uh, St. Luke's and New Canaan Country School, and they're seeing a really big uptick in interest in their schools. And some of it's locally. People aren't comfortable necessarily with the e-learning possibilities in the public school system for the fall but they've definitely said that there's others that are just people new to town. So um, I think any information that we can share with them and they can share with us, I think will be, hi, whoever that is at Heather's house waving, <laughs> um, would, would be helpful as, as we plan how we're gonna move forward. Kevin, how much did TDAC, how much of the budget did TDAC, uh, or did your, is your budget for economic development, uh, did you get approved? <laughs> You remember? 30,000 again. Okay, I thought so. Okay. So the clock starts ticking again, July 1, correct? You spent most of it. I know we did, but now we get to start fresh. Right. Right. So, so Tucker, one, one statistic that was reported that I had heard that um, the amount of address changes in this period from New York to Connecticut, so this would be renters, buyers, people moving in with their families, has grown by eightfold. So that's Believe one, it. it's gone from 12,000 to 10,000. And so one thing I feel that- You mean 1,200 to 10,000? Yeah, I'm gonna say that's a decrease. Well, I'm yeah. sorry, 1,200 <laughs> to, excuse my dyslexia, 1,200 to, uh, to 10,000. So um, anyways, and I think that one, one thing that you've done or we've done or somebody has done here is that those videos, uh, informational videos about the area and the arts that are available here and the shopping I mean, those are getting to those people. I think, uh, you know, adding to their experience and hopefully they'll decide to stay or to discover us even for a day. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of those people, Jack, though, are, are people in their 20s and 30s that came home and are living with parents. Mm -hmm. and they, oh, yeah. They're getting yeah. their mail temporarily here, yeah. but they plan to go back to the city probably eventually. Yeah, but I don't know, though, Kevin. I mean, I, you know, I've changed. got one living here with me who's... <laughs> yeah who's staying here and he's just gone over to see a friend tonight who his age, my son's 30 years old and they're all looking at houses out here now. Yeah. Yeah. And, and just, yeah, go ahead. Just one thing to add to what Amanda said, you know, if we do other informational videos about the town and our area, we might add a, a section about the, the services that are offered here. Cause that is one thing that uh, is attractive, the quality of the lawyers and the this and the that, that, you know, the second story people that we have here, the different services in town. It, it is unique. So I've always felt like the Norwalk, um, what do they call it, emergency clinic or whatever, I've always felt like they could do a better job of advertising their themselves over there. Mm -hmm. Parker, so. just occurred to me, we, we should mention and, and emphasize the good news the bank club is uh, yeah. to stay in town with their headquarters, and that's going to bring 50 or 60 people uh, to work in New Canaan from surrounding towns right hey, kevin i didn't hear you mean that, that is a story for live well is that what live new canaan, canaan. mean no, no, no just, it's well, just in terms of you know economic development things were things you know good good things that are happening uh so bankwell you know is is, le is renting uh, i'm sorry leasing for 10 years the uh cobia building and um oh sell, okay. sell, selling their building in wilton bringing employees over from either southport or, or westport uh, or Fairfield, and so that'll bring employees and possibly home buyers to uh, to New Canaan. Sure. Yeah, that's big. Tucker, one thing I wanted to mention, you were mentioning talking to the Board of Education, you should probably talk to St. Luke's and uh, Country School too, because I was reading about how in the Hamptons, all the private schools out there are getting a huge influx of New Yorkers who are afraid to go back to the city and you know their kids are all in private school in the city so now they're putting them out in the Hamptons or paying two tuitions to you know to keep the place in both but I think that's something we should look at and um, yeah that's what Mark Davis and Aaron Cooper have been telling us uh, yeah. on the four o'clock calls so but I think to get some numbers around that some data around that would be helpful well, one other thing I was thinking you know we're finding with our business all these things we've been doing virtually we actually might keep doing them once things go back to normal. And I was mm -hmm. thinking we should think about what's worked really well virtually, whether it's Zoom downtown or something like that, that we should make a regular thing. Is there a monthly Zoom about New Canaan that prospective home buyers or somebody could tune into mm -hmm. and we could have different people 
talk about the town. It could be a, you know, a monthly thing that we schedule working with the realtors. And the reality is too, Tucker, that's where 79 can start stepping up to the right. plate as it changes its, as it changes what it does going forward. And having said that, kind of a nice segue is um, Bob Doran has produced, somebody's putting some salt and pepper on their food and it sounds awful. <laughs> um, I can hear someone shaking. Or it's a rattlesnake. Or it's a rattlesnake. <laughs> um, Bob has produced a great video, um, a virtual video on the 4th of July. You want to tell him, Bob, quickly about that? Sure. Basically, um, you know, uh, Tom Stadler had an idea that even though we uh, we cannot celebrate our July Fourth uh, together at Waveney, that there should be some way for the community to get together <laughs> virtually and celebrate. We were fortunate enough that, uh, and I may pronounce her name wrong, Tucker, correct me, but Retu Johnny mm -hmm. um, had actually set up a camera last year at the Waveney Fireworks and took a beautiful video of the 23 minutes of the fireworks we were able to uh, get permission to use that from her and uh, both Kevin and Tucker giving a wonderful introduct community introduction between the town uh, celebrating virtually and getting back to downtown uh, that we could we could all celebrate still as a community by getting our families together and watching uh, a video at the same time, possibly, but essentially we 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 were also able to get Megan Leiden, uh, who is a rising senior at New Canaan High School, to sing a rousing rendition of God Bless America for us. Uh, and then we basically segue out of three minutes of intro into 23 minutes of a beautiful uh, fireworks display, uh, which because of the way uh, Ritu and her family shot shot the video, it's all up at the sky, but she left a microphone on, so you hear all the ambient sounds of the families and the kids and everybody talking and chattering to each other, and it almost, I'll say more than almost, it feels like you're sitting there. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, programmed this, uh, with Paul Sedlak has agreed to program this on 79 on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, as it turns out, but Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, at, on the hour at 3, 5, 7, and 9 p.m., so and so it's on 79 but there's also starting next friday start next well friday, yes right? starting july 3rd 4th and 5th and there's also an online link so that if some for some reason three five seven and nine don't work for you and your family you can click onto a link and watch it from london from ottawa from alaska you can watch it from anywhere in the world but celebrate uh july 4th in new canaan with friends and family around the world. Uh, so that's that's the, the short version of it. Um, Tucker, anything to add? Or Kevin, anything no, to add? No, it's gonna be great. Um, I think it's, great about it. Thank you. yeah, it was fantastic, uh, well done. Uh, you heard Nancy and Beth mention um, next Thursday, July 2nd, we have um, Art in the Windows. Art in the Windows is happening in New Canaan. This is the 14th year where local artists are selected to put their works in the windows of the stores downtown. Uh, we received permission to have a closing sort of event because we didn't get to have our opening event. So we're having a closing event next uh, on the 2nd with some activities in the pop-up park area. And then you can stroll to see some of the work. Uh, the rain date will be the 3rd. So if anybody's around next Thursday or Friday, Thursday, hopefully, but Friday if the weather, if we need to, uh, that's happening next week. Um, I, I am working on some version of sidewalk sales. Uh, I've been just polling merchants right, left, and center. We have to do something. They need to move the merchandise. They like to move the merchandise, but they don't want to put it on sale too soon. So we're, um, guys, guys, sorry. Everyone's talking in my house, sorry. Um, so we are, um, we're talking about mid-August, uh, having something much smaller scale, not all the rides and fanfare, but uh, a way to really promote back to school shopping and shopping in general. Um, I also, I think most of you saw the video. I think I sent it to you, so hopefully you all saw it. If anybody wants me to play it, I can, but um, that was just a fun little thing that Laura and I did running around taking videos of all the merchants with blue ribbon, looked like a giant sort of ribbon cutting. Um, Heather loved it. <laughs> so uh, actually, you know, we put it out there and I think we've had over 3,200 views now, um, which is great. So it's getting some traction and we asked all of the merchants to also um, share that.
So just in recapping here, it sounds to me like for at least for our next meeting that we will invite some of the folks from um, the Board of Realtors to come and sort of give us some information or feedback or we can have a discussion about how, how we can convert some of these renters and what we need to do to get to them. Um, if anybody has questions between now and then, if you s send them to me, I can then get them to those folks so they can be prepared to answer those. And I'll ask Stephanie as well. Um, what else am I, and the long-term recovery strategies. So we need to start thinking about that. That's a focus that we can start working on. Tucker, then, can I chime yep. in? Sure. I just want to reiterate what Kevin brought up. The, the Bankwell deal, deal is a huge deal. So anything we can do to put out the message that New Canaan's open for business, um, th there's an opportunity there downtown. Um, I placed a nice couple who I introduced you to who left Long Island City with their business. Right. They took office space on Elm Street. It, you know, the commercial movement has been slow to follow the residential, but perhaps in the fall, once everybody knows they're going back to school or has more solid plans, maybe they'll think about taking the smaller office space or thinking about opening up in a retail environment. Um, so whatever we can do to put out the message that New is open for business, um, we should continue to do that. And I feel great about everybody that presented tonight, the work that we've done so far. So continuing, uh, just press on. Well, along those lines, so the, the video that I talked about with our little blue ribbon video, we're doing it now for phase two. We're doing another one, but with this cute, we're open sign and we're taking advantage of all the salons and the businesses that opened as part of phase two. We're letting them have a shot at it. So that one will come out um, about two and a half weeks. Um, so we'll just keep at it on our end uh, for the- And you know, I have to say the message about resilience is an important one. Hopefully it uh, eventually becomes economic resilience, but um, just the other night, um, being downtown New Canaan and the expanded outdoor seating, I mean, it was a very lively evening. And I think those kinds of videos right now about, you know, still being cautious, but taking advantage of a, a slow opening is, is such a great message um, and for the um, potential renters of real estate right now that's also a good message that the town is you know embracing yep. this right Tucker the other thing is you know I think outdoor dining is going to be a really welcome feature throughout the summer and yes. as, as you did on forestry we might we might think about putting the Christmas lights up early and yeah, making so we, Street, we put Street. them all up in Forest Street. I don't know if anybody's seen that. Um, we, we normally fundraise for, uh, back in, in, we do that in sort of October, November. We uh, asked Rob Hutch to give us a little bit of credit and he put them up early, but I do love it. And I'm thinking that, yeah, we probably should do that on Elm Street as well. What, what's the budget for Elm Street? The whole project is $25,000. So Elm Street is Elm Street. We also do other parts. So I would say we probably could do Elm Street for 10 or 15,000. You, know, you might get more bang for your buck by just putting them up for July and August and September, October, and because uh, they're gonna be up by the fall anyway, right? Right, right. We could make a campaign out of that, but I know he'll put them up for us as long as we get them paid eventually. He put them up when we need to, so. All right. Um, Tucker. Yes. Sorry, uh, one additional thing, but going back to what Brock and Amanda were saying, I, I, I think there's another piece of the message here, especially at this time when people are thinking about what their opportunities and what their options are, is that it's, New Canaan is a destination. The Bankwell move is a great, is, is a great data point for us to be able to use to say, well, people are thinking this is a place to bring your business to. Again, mm -hmm. going back and remembering that part of what, what this was set up to do is talk about economic development. And we have a story here now, um, again, with people willing to leave the city, people not having to go back to work necessarily for several months. There's a messaging opportunity here for us. Yep. There's also an opportunity to foster uh, a, a, another class A office building because I think the yes. Bankwell transaction and, and the, the likelihood that people are going to be saying, I can move my business to Connecticut from Manhattan and uh, strengthening our grand list by having there's a couple opportunities in town to 
to build some Class A office space. It's a chance for us to be ahead of the curve on that messaging, Kevin. You're absolutely right. Yeah. All right. I've made notes of all of this. So again, I think for all of us until the next meeting, if we can all give some thought around these pieces of it and uh, talk about them a little bit more at our next meeting and make some um, plans for how we move forward. I plan to have an August meeting. We don't meet in August. We'll meet in July, but we don't meet in August. We right. can if we need to. I mean, remotely now is easy enough that I think people can. So we can do that if we need to. Having said that, our next meeting is, again, we were meeting, Kevin, just so you know, we were meeting every week and I know you were joining us, but our next meeting right now is July 23rd, but that doesn't mean we can't be doing some work between now and then. Uh, oh, I know what it is. It's someone's sprinkler. That's what I hear. It might <laughs> be Greg. Greg's outside. I, yeah, actually it's birds. Is yeah. it? Oh, okay. Um, anyway, so uh, we, we can meet more often, but I think if everyone just gives a lot of thought to some of these topics and we can dive in a little bit more at our next meeting and we'll share the minutes with anybody that uh, couldn't join us tonight. So, All right. So. Sound like a wrap. So uh, watch the 4th of July. Enjoy the 4th of July. The, the message on that one also is get takeout from the local restaurants, bring it home, have some fun uh, and watch the show. Um, Look for our next video coming out and we'll just keep plugging everything to Live New Canaan that we can. If any of you have anything that content that you want to share with them, you're happy to, happy to have you send it to me and I can forward it on. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thanks everybody. Good night. See you later. Good night. Bye. Bye.